Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. We're going to talk about the Disney board and uh, Nelson Peltz and all that drama going on. And Geeky is actually going to lead this video. Because I have thoughts. I, she has thoughts on it. I, I'll be honest. I haven't been following this story very closely. I knew that they were going to have a vote and I knew that he wanted to get some people well, out. Well, it's not just him, Blackwell. There's another team that wants to, to put their people on the board. And here's the thing. It's like the board is it keeps putting out letters and no, no, don't vote for them. Submit the card to vote for us. We need people that know what they're doing. Then you don't fucking vote for them. So let's talk about this fucking shit show. Since That's we're right. Already oh, and happy, happy Groundhog Day. Happy Groundhog Early Day. Early spring. Uh, is Mickey going to see a shadow? Is he going to see... Uh, it's going to be six more years of bullshit. That's six my, more years uh, of that's bullshit. That's my guess. I saw my shadow. Six more weeks of bullshit. So let's uh, let's talk about this, guys. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. You'll get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo. Uh, Geeky is going to lead this. This is coming from her piratesandprincesses.net website. And uh, yeah, let's see what's going on with the Disney board. Okay, so the Walt Disney Company, the board put out a press release, which okay. I have right here. They put this out yesterday. So we're gonna just go through this and I'll add my commentary along the way. So this is the press release first and then there's a letter they sent out to shareholders. So they said that the Walt Disney Company sent out a letter to shareholders outlining the strength of the board of directors and its oversight of Disney's strategy and management team as the company navigates a new era of building that will drive meaningful growth and shareholder value creation well into the future. Well, shareholder value creation would be a good thing considering how the, the stocks are, are not good and they haven't been. And oh, they're up to $97. Yeah, and they were down to 78 not that long ago. And the, the, the high for the last year is 118. Yeah, that's not it's great. It's not great, guys. That's not great. You've been driving shareholder value. Why were you holding out and not doing anything about it till now? That is a very good question. Yeah, so um, that's the thing. Like, they're, I, I don't understand. I mean, I get that they're trying to, to hold on to what they have. But, like, if you're a Disney shareholder, which I was, and I sold all my Disney stock because I, I saw it as diminishing returns. But if you're a shareholder, if you look at the state of the company, why in the hell would you keep the same people in charge to make the same decisions, bad decisions, again and again and again and again? I know, right, but that's what they want. So they keep saying this. They, 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 you'll see this repeated over and over. Disney's board of directors urges shareholders to protect their investment in the future of the company by voting the white card Whoa. for Disney's 12 nominees. Vote white, don't vote Blackwell. <laughs> oh, my God. Vote white. Um, yeah, but it's it's like, yeah, they're they're just like they're like walking him through it. It's like, OK, guys, so the blue button is the one you want to push, not the red button. Well, this one's a white card. Make sure you use the white card. Do we mention the white card? The, the voting meeting is going to be on April 3rd. OK, so that's the meeting. Anybody who has stock you know, or has purchased stock by February 5th will be allowed to vote. Oh, you know, people are going to buy stock just just to be able to vote. Uh, I hope so. Um, oh, I should buy some more stuff. So here, here we go. Okay. I should. Disney has the right strategy to drive profitable growth and value creation for shareholders, while well, it's definitely not for guests, and has made substantial progress against our objectives to meet, make our business more efficient and effective. More efficient and effective. You mean the business that the reason it was so inefficient was because Bob Iger was in charge for years? And the board that's there, except for a couple people, the board that is currently in power has been in power for a long time. They right. have been in power through a lot of the, the crap that has put the company in the situation it is now. And they want to stay in power. So they're talking about, they're, they have sharpened their focus on our greatest brand and franchise assets. You mean the ones you already fucking ruined? Like Star Wars and Marvel and Pixar. And what else do they get Muppets. from Fox? Home Alone, oh, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, Aliens. Alien. Aliens. Know what that's going to be like. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah they yeah. have ruined the brands they have, you know, acquired and even the ones, you know, things that they had on their own. And they're going to work sharpened our focus. Is that why Pixar movies are failing? Is that why all your movies failed at the fucking box office? Because you didn't have your focus sharpened? Not just the box office, but the fucking that's box. That's right. Box office. Said, That's and a we, whole nother. A can continued commitment to cutting costs and a reinstatement of the dividend. We just shit canned a bunch of people, but good news, shareholders get money. No, they're okay. The, the only reason they reinstated the dividend 
It's like if you will vote for them. Is a it's a bribe because they're not doing well enough to pay out dividends. They're they're doing they're worse. not. They, they're doing worse than they've ever done, but they're gonna not they're ever, gonna give you. A, it's not good. Uh, then they've done recent say ever. in recent history. Okay, recent, yes. They they are doing worse than they've done in recent history, and there's no good reason to reinstate the dividend other than the shareholders. But they're trying to bribe you. They want to bribe you. They're reinstating the dividend because they're like, look, guys, we're gonna make you some money off of what? What are you gonna no, make money off of? Because they cut a bunch of people. So, you know, the, their pay is going to go to you. Um, and they're going to fortify ESPN and turbocharge Disney's growth experiences business. I mean, their experiences business. You mean the theme parks when you're going to get your fucking asses kicked because Universal Orlando just unveiled a lot of the stuff. Well, I already knew about a lot of it, but they unveiled it to people and you're getting a first look at the massive expansion and all the really um, immersive environments and things. And meanwhile, Disney, Disney, they're going to be like, Hey, hot damn guys, you know what you're getting? You're getting a reskin of dinosaur. So it looks like Indiana Jones from over at uh, Disneyland yeah, near right? the Encanto area. Which makes no damn sense. No, that they're makes calling no it the sense. whatever regions area, whatever they're calling it. And then, oh, and you know what? Zootopia, we hear you. You want Zootopia Animal Kingdom? Don't worry. We got you, fam. New projection show with a tree of life featuring Zootopia characters. And I hear you. Yeah, Magic Kingdom needs some work in some places with some updating. So we're taking down the Country Bear Jamboree and we're going to bring it back with new songs that are just our IP, like guaranteed bear necessities and things like that, re-signed by country music people. And we're going to take all the charm out of that attraction. But don't worry. We're going to sh fill it shit full of uh, IP songs. We're going to be shit full we're, of IP. Yeah, we're, just, we're just stuffing that shit right back in. You you have heard of Chock Full of Nuts. This is... Am, uh, I'm uh, on medication. <laughs> chimney stuffed full. This is going to be like Chim Chim Cheree, but we're going to stuff your <laughs> chimney full of shit. <laughs> sorry. I am really on... I'm on medication today. So I if I make no sense, I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> It's better. Disney believes t Disney believes a lot of things. All 12 of its nominees are the best qualified to create sustainable shareholder value. Then Again, you haven't so far. You haven't so far. We'll get it right one of these days. The Disney Board of Directors is compromised of engaged, diverse, and dynamic leaders. Oh, hot damn. Whose skills, perspective, and insights have tanked the company. I mean, are essential in driving profitable oh growth God. that we haven't done yet. And delivering on Disney's strategic priorities as a company navigates ongoing industry-wide challenges. Your fucking challenges are self-inflicted for yep. the most part. Yep. You, you done did it to yourself. I mean, yes, there are industry-wide issues as far as like, you know, ad spends and things like that. Disney's not one of the ones being highly impacted by that, though. People not watching streaming? That's because we told you it was bad to double, triple down that when the pandemic was going to end and people were going to go back to work. You did it anyway. Actually, uh, Amazon and Google are both doing really well with television advertising. You know, but so there you go. But uh, yeah, that's where all the money's going. But uh, God, yeah. Again, why? Why? If somebody tanks your company, you have a manager that you can you can point everything back to that manager as to why the company is failing. Iger. <laughs> Iger. You get rid of them. You get rid of it. And, and his enablers basically get rid of Iger. He got, and I think that's what he's afraid of. Well, he only puts people, he only puts people in positions that he can control. Yeah. So it's an extension of himself instead of somebody pushing back to actually challenge him. Yeah. And that's why, you know, when Chapa came in, he got rid of some of his people because, you know, he knew it was going to be a problem. And then when Iger came back in, he got rid of Chapek's people. So he had only people he can control. All right. Yep. So the next part in bold. The Disney Board of Directors does not endorse the Trying Group nominees Nelson Peltz and Jay Rizzullo or the ba Blackwell's nominees Craig Hatkoff, J Jessica Schell, and Leah Sullivan and believes they do not possess the appropriate range of talent that their dynamic, diverse people do, skill, perspective, and or expertise to effectively support the board's ongoing efforts to drive profitable growth and shareholder value. Uh, you didn't do you didn't do it. You people have been there forever and you fucking tanked it all. Jay Rizzullo was I know. The, oh wait, wait till you hear the digs they make later. Okay, because he was next in line to be CEO of Disney. And he was yes. a CFO for years and oh, he did well, his he's, job he's very, just very well. Rusty and he's he's stale. The, oh, the, for oh fuck's they, sake. They, they they go there. So here's the letter. Okay. Dear fellow shareholders. Thank you for your investment in the Walt Disney Company and your commitment to its enduring legacy as the leading name in global entertainment. <laughs> Bullshit. Sorry. Um, 
sorry. Disney has an unparalleled portfolio of valuable businesses, brands, and assets that we have fucking run into the ground. And the best in-class management team, what we have left after we fired everybody, who in close coordination with your board, aka all Iger's hires, have made substantial progress executing on the strategic transformation of the company. I mean, when you're executing by firing everyone? <laughs> they executed Order 66. That's right. What they did. As a result, Disney has overcome one of the most challenging periods in its history, and a new era of building is well underway to drive meaningful growth and shareholder value creation long into the future. You had to have the era, the era, of this, the era of building now because it was the era where they had to, they had to, you know, take it back in and tear it down, and, and it was the deconstruction so they could reconstruct. All of the things that you have problems with, Iger caused. Yeah. Your board caused, because they went along with him and let him do whatever he wanted. Your movies, all except for one, failed at the box office. Did Iger, other than acquire stuff, did Bob Iger himself actually do anything? Because I think the reason that the movie studios are in the condition they're in is the people he left in charge just ran amok. You know, Kathleen Kennedy ran amok. Wait, they, they, and she's still in charge. Yeah. They they have found they have somehow uh, devalued Star Wars. How the hell do you devalue Star Wars? They found a way. Marvel. They have devalued Marvel. They they have devalued Pixar. Pixar. We're waiting for it to roll into Walt Disney Animation because it's just a, it's just a joke at this point. They try to re-release movies, which we told them wasn't going to work, and it didn't. That anything that they've acquired with Fox, they keep running into the ground. Yeah. They keep taking the teeth out of everything that they had, and it's ridiculous. And the, but the, but they're they are the ones, the guys. They're the team. They're the dream team that already put it in the fucking place it is. That is why your vote using the white, white, all caps, bold, proxy card <laughs> for the election of all, only your board's 12 nominees this year is particularly critical. As detailed in Disney's proxy statement, two hedge funds, Try and Fund Management LP and Blackwell's Capital are each seeking to replace a portion of the board with their own separate nominees, all of whom your board thinks are stinky, stinky, stinky. Your board <laughs> believes do not possess the appropriate range of talent skill, perspective, and our expertise to effectively support the boards. I mean, Iger, we don't think that they're going to go along with what we want. Yeah, exactly. Ongoing efforts to drive profitable growth and shareholder value creation in the, in the, in the face of industry-wide challenges. Bullshit. Your stuff's doing shit because you made bad choices. You overspent. You're getting your ass kicked by everyone because you're, not, you're, you're so divided up you know, with other things. You're not focused on what you need to focus on. They need to be the best Disney they can be, and they're too busy trying to be trying to tell how to vote be politically. Right, trying, right. you know, Bob Iger's out there, you know, flitting around Hollywood all the time until recently. Buying now they're pissed up, at him. Buying up companies, buying up studios that you have no idea how to run. Like they well, have no idea how to run uh, half the companies they buy. I mean, Fox, like he he spent seventy one. I would bring that up if they have a chance to debate it. Just be like. You spent over $70 billion on Fox assets, and what the hell have you done with them? But not just, they've ruined what they, it's not yeah, a lot. Ruined them. But then years beyond that, they're like, you know, they're talking about the streaming services, and they're saying they should be on par with Netflix. They were supposed to be profitable, and they had these, these lofty goals, and they kept, yeah. they walked them back a couple of times. But by end of, end of 2024, by, by September 2024, we're going to have all these subscribers. You're not going to come anywhere close. Then you're trying to roll it into Reliant. You're trying to roll it into, you know, different people's subscription services. So it looks like you have more yeah. subscribers. But you're only, if you come, if you hit the, it's going to be based on smoke and mirrors and, you know, bullshit. Let's be honest. Yeah. And really, I mean, what you do is you give, you give Bob Iger a task that he cannot possibly achieve. This is how they used to get rid of people at some of the companies I worked at. The impossible task, like, well, you need to get, you know, revenue up uh, 75% by next quarter or, you know, that's just the metric. And then the, they don't do that, even though it's literally impossible to do it. Well, we had to let you go because you didn't do it. Yeah. Okay, well, they, won't, they, they brought him back. Yeah. Bob Iger, you know, because he's so smart with money that when he uh, apparently, according to everybody, besides buying himself boats, used his uh, stock money that he had to go invest in things like, you know, Funko. Funko. And some of these other businesses that were NFTs and things AI, like that, yeah, metaverse, and and, yeah, and that didn't yeah. that have gone, you know, not that has not gone very well. 
He's so good with his own money. Let's put him in charge of Disney so again. What, what did he do with his riches? At Disney, you know, gave him hundreds of millions of dollars when he left. He'd be set for life. His family, his grandkids, be set for life. He went and bought a bunch of Funko Pops and NFTs. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> elect the board best qualified to create sustainable shareholder value. That's what people need to do. You need to elect the board best qualified. This board ain't it. I'm no. sorry. They have proven time and time again they're not it. Um, and again, most of these people have been on the board for years. There's a few yeah. that are like two or three that are mostly new, but are in the last like since like 2022 or whatever. But most of them have been on the board for years. They were there and they went along with Iger doing whatever Iger wanted to do. That's why they're there. They're because they're yes people. They know where their lips should go. Anyway. Just yeah. one year after initiating a strategic overhaul of the company to restore creativity to the heart of business and establish a more efficient, cost-effective, and streamlined approach to operations. Strategic overhaul, where you fired a bunch of people because the company wasn't doing well because you went too hard in on Disney+, Plus, which was Bob mm -hmm. Iger's idea. Where you've made the parks really, really, really difficult to navigate so people are going elsewhere because it's too expensive, it's too tricky. Also, Bob Iger's idea. Mm -hmm. This a lot of the stuff we tra trace back to Iger and company, and they keep saying about creativity. Well, I don't think that it was smart the way Chapek did things. We, you know, taking the creativity out of it. There hasn't been creativity at Disney for a long time. No, and a lot of the things that failed the box office this year were greenlit because they were delayed under Bob Iger. Yeah. So the board and management of the company are now intensely focused on building for the future since we, you know, so don't just forget all the, the, the mud and dirt and debris there. We're building for the future. This building plan, which is already showing strong results as described below, is designed to position our streaming business for substantial, there we go, streaming again, sustained growth and profitability. They're going on about streaming because that's what Nelson Peltz is running against them for. Reinvigorating the company's film studios. Well, you got to do something because all your movies are fucking failing. Yeah, they are. Are you going to fire Kathleen Kennedy? Fortify ESPN for the future and turbocharge. They keep saying the same thing over and over again. Turbocharge, grow the Disney's experience. They keep, they, that's the second time they've said that. Uh, you got to get a battery and revive it first. AI. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, put some... Put some clamps on on uh, Iger's nipples and. Oh, I just meant the, the, their oh. experiences. Their their, their uh, well, that sounds worse. The part. They got and turbocharged Bob Iger. <laughs> now he's gonna make good decisions. We're just put some get, clamps on his nipples. Gonna he's experience. gonna shit his pants first, but then he's gonna shit out some really great ideas. The best <laughs> ideas since Walt Disney. Disney's experiences include the parks, and at this point in time, there's so many. There's there's a lot of issues, and everybody's gonna lap you. And that's just the way it is, because we're going to spend all this money someday in 10 years. Delivering on Disney's significant growth potential require leadership that has a deep understanding of the company's current strengths and blah, 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 blah. They said this already. Okay. Um, and they said this already, too. And they said, but white, oh, you're, we're good. Vote the white proxy card today. Only vote white. Remember, remember. It's important to use white. Remember to vote Democrat. Here you go. Here's, Here's your cookie. Here's all the white people. Uh, vote white, white, <laughs> white. <laughs> Mary, because it's the, the color of diversity. Mary T. Barra, blah, blah, blah. You know all the people that we've been talking about. We don't, we don't want to vote for the other ones because they're a horse of a different what, color. I don't know what, yeah, I know, right? I don't know what colors their cards are. But here, here we go. Here we're going to talk, here we're going to talk shit about the, the comp competition. So they're talking about different people running against them. In contrast to your current directors who have skills and experiences directly re relevant to and closely aligned with the key drivers of our business and our strategic priorities. Don't vote for these people because in contrast to the current people who have skills and, and experiences, yet they somehow still ran the company into the fucking ground for its 100th anniversary. Don't vote for these people. Mr. Peltz brings no media experience and presented no strategic ideas for Disney, while Mr. Rizzullo's perspective is stale, given he left Disney in 2015 and has not held any executive positions in the industry since. Um, I knew you'd love that one. Okay, so get fucked. Uh, Jay Rizzullo was, was at Disney when Disney was in much better condition, and he was under Eisner. All right. So that's a, that's a huge, I mean, you want to see what this company actually thinks about people. Like he was a company man. Uh, Jay Rizzullo was a company man and, and they just like literally just threw him under the wheels of the bus. Like this guy was supposed to be the next CEO of Disney. 
He was a threat. Iger sees him as a threat. He is a threat because I think what's, I personally think what is going to happen, I think it's going to be Disney Game of Thrones. If they get on the board, the next step will be to get Rizzullo in as CEO. Okay, we're on the board now. You have to name a successor. Jay's here. He's got the experience. He worked under Eisner when things were a hell of a lot better. Get Eisner on the board. He's, he's, He's stale. He, he, he worked back in 2015, you know, back when we were making money. Oh, we can't have that. He, basically, Iger can't control him, so no. Um, Mr. Hatkoff and Ms. Sullivan do not have any relevant large public media and entertainment company experiences or skills that would assist the board in continuing to oversee a successful execution of our strategic transformation. Basically, he keeps saying that over and over, which means they're not going to go along with what we want to get the transformation we, we, we want to do, is, is what it translates to. Ms. Shell would not be an independent director and does not have any experience serving as a director of a public company. No, but. But, but you know what? Some of these people didn't either. Well, Ms. Ms. Shell has uh, extensive experience working at Universal and Warner Brothers, and she was pretty high ranking. Oh, I'm was with, she? Yes, she was. So uh, she worked for Disney's direct competitors. She might actually be. The ones uh, that are actually getting something done? The ones that are actually getting it done. She might actually be valuable to have on the board because she knows the weaknesses of the other companies and what they're doing and universals kicking your ass. So yeah, I would look at this and I'd be like, yeah, I absolutely would love to have the former CFO of Disney and somebody who worked for the competition on my board. Yeah. But they, they don't want that. You need to vote for us so we can just keep you know, shitting this shit out and keep making a mess of the company and keep running it down and then if we have, okay, you literally are celebrating a $97 share of stock because it's up from the 78 you ran it down to, but it's still nowhere near the high of the last year of $118. And it's sure as hell nowhere near what happened with, during the pandemic where it was closer to 200. It's nowhere near that. Nope. This is the lowest that these stocks have been when it hit the $78 for like, what, 15 years, 10 years, something like that. It was, it was a long time. Yeah. And yeah. it's been a long time and it, and, and it was the lowest it's been since Iger came back and under this board, but no, no, don't, don't, don't put new people in. And again, in caps, Disney's board is optimally constituted to oversee strategy, blah, blah, blah. And then they don't do it again. They do it again here. I'm not going to read the rest of it. It goes on the same bullshit. Their priorities. We're going to achieve significant and sustained growth, though we've been here forever and we haven't done jack shit. No. Over the past hundred years, our film studios have produced some of the most iconic stories and characters. But you're failing at the box office. But All your did, movies bombed. Did that board oversee their most iconic movies? No. No, that they ever saw. Not. No, but they're overseeing all the live action reboots and this awful Snow White shit, aren't they? You, you know who was working at Disney when they released some iconic movies in the nineties? It was Jay Rizzullo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. Maybe, maybe. It would be a good choice. At the bottom. Remember, vote white. Vote white. Vote white. You have to vote white. <laughs> Disney wants you to vote white. If you want it right, you got to vote white. Oh, my God. Disney, that's if so you want, racist. I don't know what the other color is, but let's say it's black. If you want it back, you got to vote black because it's bullshit. Uh, yeah, this is I, – I, look, I would look at this and I'd be like, okay, so what you're telling me is if I, if I don't want things to change – I use the white card. Okay. So any other color is cool, right? Because that white card basically means we keep failing. No, I want change. And I think they know. The fact that they had to put this out there and spell it out. Vote white, everybody. Vote white. And and here's why we think these people are stinky, mean people. And, of course, they didn't mention any of uh, Shell's experience. They didn't mention that Jay Rizzullo was there when Eisner was killing it, you know, um, before Iger came in and actually killed it. So yeah, they're, they're panicking because if they thought they had this, they wouldn't even be bothering to do it. But the fact they have to spell it out. Oh, repeatedly. How many times we take a shot every time they say white one and it's always in all caps and bold one. Let's see. I don't know. I'm going to go through here. Da, 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 da. God, they just talk out their ass and it goes on forever. Much like our videos Two, <laughs> um, three. Uh, at least four times, four. So oh at least God. four times in this, they, they vote white, vote white. Yeah. I, um, God, I might, I might buy some Disney stock just to, but be you have to... a couple days to get it in. I might ju- just, 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 and people are going to buy it. All you got to do is buy a couple shares, right? I don't, I don't know. Just buy a couple shares and you get the right to vote. Yeah. I'll be like, get the, get the fuck out of here, Bob.
You you had your you had your time. Your time has passed. You should have stayed down. Actually, look at that. Bob Iger, if he had just stayed away, he would have left on a high note. Been like, well, it's somebody else's problem. Right, but he didn't. Well, even some of the people they just put on the board, the one guy, you know, worked for one of the banks that they kissed. Like I think it was it was a Moth and the Nathanson or Morgan Stanley. I forget. It was one of the banks. Know. Bank it was off the top of my head. But um, they have always been the ones that were allowed to ask questions at the shareholder meetings. They're also the ones who who were doing the valuation for um, for the value of Hulu, which seems like a conflict of interest. But they're they're bringing their, so he's like one of their people bringing them in the other guy that he worked for sky which and, and he used to have dizzy channel and a whole bunch of stuff on there before like i mean if they're bringing them in if i want somebody on the board you better fucking believe that person knows that they are underneath Iger, that he's always on top he's the top you know you know where you you're just the bottom shareholders you're just the bottom and you, and you, and need, you will follow what you need you to want. take it take you it from are, behind from mickey that's right you are an extension <laughs> of him and you'll do what he says it's like what reedy creek was I am the law. Basically. I am the mouse. Uh yeah, I I would I would actually trust Jay Rizzullo as as CEO. 100 years of Disney and they they and for the 100th anniversary they fucked the company. Well, it's been coming, but no pun intended. But did you see the look it, in the eyes give me. Is that the problem they they I don't know. They, they after came the, for the 100th year, it. they're going to make sure that the company's <laughs> not around 100 more years if you keep this No, that's in. it. Disney at this point, where Disney is at right now, they are no longer a creative company all they've had a massive brain drain all the the good ones basically got out they left they went someplace else they are a, an ip farm they are uh just a company that's a holdings company with a bunch of all this this ip they bought off of better smarter more talented people that they've destroyed like actually disney would be in a better place if they pulled a hasbro and just said hey we're just gonna license all of our shit out to other studios to make star wars movies and marvel movies and whatever because we can't do it anymore all I know is I like Disney a hell lot better in 2015. Yes. And Rizzullo was there in 2015. He was. I don't like where Disney's going. I would love to see Disney turn it around. But a lot of people just want it to burn. I don't want that. I actually I have been Disney a Disney burn. fan no. for years. We do a Disney blog. We obviously don't hate Disney. But I hate the behavior. I hate what I'm seeing. I hate the direction. I don't like the stuff that's being allowed to happen. And I would very much like to see that course corrected. Can it be? I don't know. But I'd like to see that course corrected. And I do not think the board, as it stands, with Iger in charge, is going to course correct anything. Amen. We got to wrap this up. Yes. Let's wrap it up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Check out piratesandprincesses.net. And also check out the Pirates and Princesses podcast, which oh, yeah, is it's coming, coming back. It's coming back. It's not going to be as raw as these. these. Uh... I don't know. I'm on that one. So it might be raw. <laughs> we'll it's see. Me. I have to put an explicit. It's me. Okay, Are we going to put an explicit, try, Are we gonna put explicit warning on that one? Try very hard. Welcome back to my fucking Disney <laughs> fucking podcast, motherfuckers. <laughs> It's the most magical fucking place in the fucking earth. It's so earth. funny because I used to never swear. It's true. I would never swear. It was Mickey like. Mickey made me do it. I don't know. I just, I got, I just something snapped. And I just got tired of shit. And I was just like, oh, fuck it. And you know, here we are. Anyway, we'll talk to you later. Bye.